so there's a lot going on in this episode. So pretty much, we plan to hopefully turn the key on this one. And also, update you guys on what's been going on. Like, obviously it's changed a fair bit since we've last seen. A few moments. Radiator's in, shroud's in, fan's in, belts are on, vacuum lines are done, overflow tank's on, fuel primer's on, fuel lines are ran, which we've done a 12mm feed and an 8mm return, going down the passenger side of the car to make it all neat. Ran the loom already, that's a Mick Wallen loom, everything's already labelled out for you, ready to go. Pretty simple setup, about 3 or 4 wires to get the motor to run. And it's a fresh brand new loom, which is awesome. Starter motor's in. Coming over here. No, the turbo is not installed just yet. Need to do a fair bit of moving around. I need to push the turbo forward and face it this way. A few reasons for that is because of one, it's currently having a date with um, the master cylinder. So I've got to fix that issue and so we can fit the exhaust down there. Other than that, I am now running this wiring through the carbs and putting the battery behind the seat because I've obviously done a battery delete here. So what I've got to do is run bulk terminals so I can still start it and jump start it from in the engine bay. So it's not as much of an inconvenience for myself. But anyway, I've got to go actually down and get some more parts for this thing because I'm actually going to start doing some bit of the suspension on it and little bits and pieces, but a bit of a Mitch match episode, this one. Hang on, I missed something. Also did the vacuum lines, running everything down here. Pretty much I'm running everything down the front, so the firewall is all nice and bare as such. So the only thing that will go over the firewall is just one aircon line, and maybe one heater line, that's it. Oh, also, I've done a heater line. I forgot to also mention that. I've done one, goes out of here, straight down. So, both of them, I'll use a v, VS Commodore or SS, even SS lines, but the same. They're like 90 out, they're pretty long, and then they 90 again. So, um, works well when you're doing conversions with those lines. And they're 16 mil, so it works out well for patrols, cruisers, etc. So, that's a little handy tip for you. Well, this is something you guys haven't seen yet. I'll give you guys a quick run through on it because I'm gonna do like another video of like a canopy fit out and bits and pieces on it. But I'll show you some stuff it has on it. So it's got a nice thick headboard. It is a 30 liter headboard water tank. It's got tray sides obviously. Full size trundle drawer. Good part about this is it's all adjustable as well and full alley, which means it's pretty light. Canopy. So, step back for a moment. Sizing is 1830 by 1870 with a 1500 mil long canopy. So let's have a look at the canopy. Well, where I store all my car parts at the moment. Nice little dump pot. Can you see through there? There you come. Anyway. So, got all internal storage, which I'm going to get rid of this anyway, it's just what the canopy comes with. So, I'll do a full canopy fit out, which will probably be pretty cool actually. But yeah, I thought I'd just show you that anyway. Moving on. Coming to the rear, don't mind the mess. Um, trundle drawer there, I have tail lights there, which are coming. But now I've got to run off and go do some running around, grabbing some more parts from people. Um, yeah, so this episode is going to be pretty mixed matched. Also, I'll be doing a bit of work on my patrol today. Um, I'll bring that as well, the other one, the wagon. So I will show you guys that as well. Well, he stopped one for today.
Damn yeah, sweet. There you go, man. Thank you. Oh, yours. There we go. So, we're going to put the new supercharger on. So, I'll give you guys a bit of a rundown of how we're actually doing it. So, we've got the 2300 Harrop just here. We've got a Valley cover just here. Got to put that on. Because this one, the difference is, these bolts stick out. That's there. And the oil pressure sticks out the back. The Harrop blows, it's pretty flush, so I've got to get rid of that one and put the Harrop one on. But anyway, let's get to it. Alright, so that was a bloody mission to get that on by myself, but she's on there. The difference between this and this charger and the other charger is there is so much more room to work with. Like, I can actually work on my coil packs, I can get to the fuel rail, I can do all this stuff now because before I had to pretty much take the blower off to get to anything. So, more power and easier to work on I reckon. Time to start it up, so pretty much. I've hooked up the sensors, I've hooked up this sensor, air intake temp, my fuel rail, my bloody coil packs, pretty much hooked up everything, just going to give it a fire up, make sure she's um, all safe and healthy at the moment, and then I will start assembling the front and getting belt sizes and bits and pieces. get done in regards to the idle and everything because it needs a map sensor to suit this setup it's gonna be slightly different and obviously I can't run it for long because it's got no water pump on it or anything but in saying that I'm gonna go ahead and put some pulleys on it make sure they fit this has got to come off again because before we actually start sending we got to um, do oil pump and duro timing chain just to be safe I see a lot of people do like the clicking thing and it's done and let's see if it works No, it doesn't work. Another thing is, we've actually already moved the turbo. So the turbo's moved now, it's actually in position. So what we've done is, we've rotated the housing. We've also turned the whole turbo another probably, maybe 20 to 30 degrees out this way, kick it. So it actually clears the master cylinder. Dump pipe runs down, and runs down past the bell housing. The plan is, we're gonna make a heat shield for the clutch. So the clutch won't, I won't lose pedal feeling when that starts heating up because obviously it's going to get pretty hot behind there so we're going to make a shield hopefully fixes that issue but um see how we go on the first drive take a few take it through a few heat cycles so but other than that it's getting pretty close engine bay wise it only needs cooler piping and exhaust and a thousand other things all right we'll try it again well that worked so I'll unwrap everything, but we've got drop boxes, front drag link, and two radius arms. So that will fix everything underneath.
morning I'm going to install the brand new Superior Radius Arms and the drop boxes and also the drag link to suit. But pretty much this is all the kit suited for the lifts I'm going. Um, it's going to make a ton of difference. If you like obviously running a three to four inch lift on standard radius arms, it would be horrible to drive. Like I couldn't imagine. Well, I can. I've done it before, and it's horrid. Um, especially for alignment. Especially for alignment, it makes it um, a lot better to drive. So much nicer, even in the steering. So much nicer. But in saying that, I'm going to get these in, and hopefully get the bypasses in as well. You, in there, get. No, it's not that simple. Get out of there. big rig here but here it is what I'm showing you guys is why I've chucked these arms in first before I set these so at the moment if I look directly down as you can see it's meant to be over here but when I lower this as you can see it's not actually on the plate it's right on the edge when I'm at bump so I've got to cut this off angle it a bit more and get it to be realistically getting it to the center. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this all off and go from there. All right, so she's back in. So I've got a pretty much oh, shitty lighting but pretty much sitting near center and that's not at full bump yet so at full bump it will come in more so that'll be exactly at center so it's pretty good compared to what it was before this is just sitting loosely I've cut the hole in the inner guard to get that to go through I've got the triple bypass right here for me what I'm going to do is see if that mounts up there. Tack, 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 tack. Tack weld the man on the bottom. Do its um, full droop and everything, and then see if it is all sweet. If all good, then we'll weld her up.
All right, well, that's all for now, but I'm going to get stuck into it and get you guys the next episode. So if you do like these, subscribe. Helps us out a lot. And, well, I'll bring you one next Monday.